when we were like warming up, you know, and we were doing jumps that were well within our range, well within our ability, jumps like this, we would play a game where if I'm doing this jump, I can only bounce back. Hey everyone, I don't know if you've seen this video, but it's pretty incredible. There's this kid from the Boston area at the Join or Die event, which is a New England based jam. He's like 16 years old. He's hit, trying to hit this massive Kong precision. And you know, there's some other bigger guys that were able to get it, but, uh, but just the fact that he's even trying it and trying it with the like ferocity that he did, it's super impressive. And so today we wanted to talk to you, our audience, by the way, what do you want to be called? What does our audience want to be called? Leave I, a comment below what you want to be called. We were calling PK nerds sometimes. I keep, I keep saying parkour nerds. It could be like parkour scholars. Yeah. Just the tressures, you know? Yeah. Parkourists. Parkourists. We just, you know, help make that a thing by like <laughs> our audience is exclusively parkourists. Leave us no a comment else. below to tell us what you want to be called as our audience. Anyway. He's hitting this massive Kong precision, or actually not even getting the precision, but he's doing a bounce back. And so we wanted to talk today about bounce backs and their utility, or the uses of why a bounce back would be so important to be able to do, and something that you should actually include in your practice. Uh, so in our last landing video, I actually mentioned that we use bounce backs as a way to um, uh, teach beginners. So before we even really get to the actual precision landing, we start with bounce backs. And a big reason why, uh, or what I like to say in classes, we practice this on purpose so that when it happens on accident, we're well prepared for it. That's, uh, an, that's an interesting one, because when you say that, like when I do a bounce back, it never feels like an accident. Mm. Like it's, it gets to a point where if you're good at it, it, it happens but the decision to do it usually happens like as you're coming in. So it never, like there's, there's a moment of preparation for it, you know? You right, know what I'm I know what you're saying, but I guess my point here being it, it's, um, you're aiming to do the precision and then you end up in a bounce back. And so you weren't necessarily pr like prepared to do it, unless right. that was your like focus, unless yeah. that was I, your I agree with the idea, but I, I think it's also like when you say accident, people have this, you know, context of, of something <laughs> bad is happening. Yeah. Whereas you can hit it and because it's like a, it's something you've prepared a bunch of times and because you're good at it, it doesn't even well, it's no longer an accident feel like an point. accident. Like, yeah. you know, when pe I, I, uh, it's, it's the move sometimes that it happens too. And, and on the street and people will, will yell and be like, Oh, that was lucky. And it's like, y y no, like mm. luck <laughs> had nothing to do with that. Yeah, I was well prepared that was, for that it. That was skill. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So anyway, we want to be able to land on the edge. So a bounce back solves several issues. The first issue that I'll, I want to mention is that a lot of times people have the wrong idea about a precision jump. They think that you have to land on top right on the edge. And uh, that becomes really problematic because when you're thinking about just landing on the top on the edge, that prevent, that's very small sliver of surface that you're trying to hit. And to be able to nail that and stop yourself and control that landing is quite difficult, especially if you're dealing with many other um, you know, complexities in, in, uh, in the jump. That also sounds like an overshoot. Yeah, sounds like you're very likely to do an overshoot, exactly. Uh, so, the, the, so a bounce back really solves that problem uh, because you're contacting the edge and then rolling forward, um, or in the actual case of a bounce back, you're gonna actually just come back behind it. So if you know how to land on the edge, which is what a bounce back teaches you, it enables you to get into a better understanding of that precision jump. And you don't actually have to be as perfect in your jump because you get, you get a little bit more range of uh, leeway, if you will. I think the next like part of it or the next detail with the, the bounce back and the importance of it is, well, so we already said it helps with the precision landing, but it also helps with commitment. Mm. So with committing to a jump, if you're only thinking of, of landing on top of it, you have this whole range and we, we can do a whole other video on you know, this whole part of the wall and landing here, but we're just talking about getting to the top here. And so if you're afraid to hit the top 
and short it a bit or like, you know, you're going to be afraid to try unless the jump is so incredibly easy for you, mm -hmm. which also then runs the risk of going over, which I guess makes more sense if we want to come over here to this side. If I'm jumping up here and, you know, I'm coming off uh, some issues, so I definitely don't want to overshoot this jump. And so if I want to be able to commit to a precision, I need to be comfortable with doing that. And if you're not comfortable with doing that, you're less likely to commit to a challenge like this one, but also other ones, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, the bounce back really encourages you to be more confident with just trying the jump and, and, and just clearing the gap. If you feel like you can actually clear the gap then, and put your feet against the wall, then you're more likely to be able to try to go on top of it. Um, so it, it increases your, your confidence in trying the jump. And then once you can try the jump, that further increases your confidence to, for potentially trying to stick it. Yeah. And even for, for a jump, just like where, okay, so say I want to jump to there, right? Same idea is I could be looking at that and really I have, have only a couple options. Uh, I can stick the landing, I can overshoot it because I have some space there, but if my goal is to stick it and I do an overshoot first, I'm then gonna have to dial back my power, which is, was actually like a huge hole in my game when it came to things like rail precisions for the longest time, because I felt really safe just touching rails and then overshoot and then you know holding it for a second and like trying to get that stick, but really just overshooting or slipping off of it. Uh, and it allowed me to try a variety of jumps, but when the goal became sticking or, or when I didn't in like a case like this where I didn't actually want to take the drop on the other side, not having that bounce back game really affected my overall ability to achieve what I wanted to do. So I started to play a game when I trained. It's not so much, not really a game. And I actually uh, got this idea uh, training with uh, our good friend, Daryl Stingley, also supreme athlete, made these guys. Check out that video too. And we played uh, when we were like warming up, you know, and we were doing jumps that were well within our range, well within our ability, jumps like this. We would play a game where if I'm doing this jump, I can only bounce back. Um, or I can stick the jump. So that only gives you like two options. So bounce back in that game, bounce backs are okay. Sticks are okay. If you overshoot, I don't know if you do some, we never did like any kind of punishment or anything, mm -hmm. but it just wouldn't count as a rep, right? right. So we're, we're trying to do, say if you're trying to do 10 reps of like a warm up jump, you're only doing bounce backs or sticks. Overshoots are not allowed. Yeah, so are cranes allowed? <laughs> not if it's a rail. That's, that's another topic. <laughs> Um, so this actually brings me to one, one final point that I want to bring up, which, um, which is that bounce backs teach you how to stop, right? So if you're, uh, if you're only landing on the top, you're likely to potentially overshoot. Um, even if you do stick it, you're not really learning how to contact the edge, but a bounce back really teaches you how to stop your momentum and be more rigid and then push yourself back. And with those qualities, right? So we kind of rehash these. So one, you want to know how to land on the edge so that you can accurately like, you know, aim for a precision jump and you know, an edge contact. Not overshoot a railing. Yeah, exactly. So an edge contact means that you're, you're actually doing a precision jump and you're not just landing on top of the surface. Two, it gives you the confidence to try jumps in the first place because if, you don't have, if you're not willing to cover the distance in the first place, you're not going to try it. Um, or you're gonna, you know, it's gonna take you a really long time to try. That's it. actually another really good point. Mm -hmm. uh, is is just covering the distance in general. So in, in this example, like where I just jumped there, I didn't get enough height. So that's why the bounce back occurred. I mean, I did it intentionally. I pulled my jump back mm -hmm. a bit, but I didn't get enough height. But I did cover the distance, and it gave me, you know, as we like to say, information about mm -hmm. the challenge so that I can attempt it again. Versus me just standing here, and maybe jumping in the air and just taking horrible drop after drop. The classic right? prep. Or just standing there and getting in my head, right? It's, not, it's no fun. But if you can get that bounce back done out of the way, you sure as heck can just try again and just kind of put more power in to get that height you need. Yeah, exactly. And then that final point was uh, stopping power, right? It teaches you to contact the edge and then be able to stop your momentum from going forward. Um, and all of those three points that we talked about here are going to increase your ability 
to do precision jumps or try more challenges. It just, it, it makes you so much better. And so if you take away one thing from this video is practice bounce backs so that you can get really confident and get really good at landing on edges. And if you have any ideas about different training strategies you can do, because this is, this is one of those sort of things where we're teaching beginners and we like to start with the bounce back as a skill that we teach beginners. In fact, we're doing it this week in classes. We're teaching like failing jumps, missing, and getting used to that feeling and the different things that are going. But when we're trying to explain that to a child, you know, who's 10 years old and just wants to jump in the foam pit and maybe do some cool jumps, and we're trying to say like, you know, you've got to learn this important bounce back technique, uh, it does come with its challenges. You know, we usually kind of overcome them, but I'm always interested if, if you're a coach out there or someone that has taught someone bounce backs and found a way to make it fun, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in today to our video. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. We've got tons of new content coming out and uh, we'll catch you in the next video.